Okay then, you're tuned in for the first of many plugs videos on my channel then. Uh, yes, now if you've come here from my previous channel, uh, there's going to be a lot of video reshoots of the plugs that are featured on there. But I do have to point out that during the reshoot of the plugs playlist, there are going to be a few new plugs slipping in there which uh, never showed on my previous channel okay so you've got to stay tuned for those and uh, well have a, have a look at them okay because uh, there are a few which uh, are going to be exclusive to this channel and therefore it will enhance the the plugs playlist for this one then what we're going to be looking at is the Wilex plugs, okay, I've got three there up in front of the camera, and there are many varieties available, and different shape, uh, shapes and sizes and and things, but normally speaking, from what I've found out, anyway, through doing a bit of research, is there's uh, three main ratings, okay, I have heard that there is a 2 amp rating, and... Well, they seem to be quite rare and difficult to get hold of. What we've got there then is a 15 amp one, a 13 amp one in the middle, and a little uh, 5 amp one. Okay, the brown one's the 15 amp. The centre one is uh, what's called 3 kilowatts or 13 amp, around about there. And. This one is the 5 amp one, the little wee 5 amp one. What we're going to be doing first is having a look inside the 15 amp one. Okay. This one is unfused. Okay, there's no fuses in this one. But these two do have fuses and we shall be looking at those uh, a little further into this section. Okay. So... We're going to take away the two white ones, and we should come back to those a little further into the video. So, what we've got there then, if I zoom in on it a bit. Although it's a 15 amp plug, it's also a piggyback plug. Okay, there's the pins. Okay. Hopefully we're getting all of that on the camera. I will zoom right in on it so you can read all of the writing. There it is then. So, the most important words right up the top of the plug there. And it says polarised. I'm just trying to uh, get that right on that for you. bit difficult to see that on that little screen on the side of the camera but I'm pretty sure it says polarized on it again in on your screen down in that corner uh, there's a button there if you press that it'll bring this up full size but I'm pretty sure that you'll see that it says polarized wirelex dual plug and if I can see that on the little wee side screen on the camera you probably see that full screen on your laptop or whatever Underneath the plugs then, uh, again it's a bit difficult to see that because the, even the pins are casting a shadow on it, so I will read that out for you. That is there, that there, let that focus readjust, there it is, just there it says 5 to 15 ampere. And these words over here are British patent. Okay. Actually, that, yeah, that focus is adjusted now. And then down the bottom there, made in England. 
So there it is. Yeah, that focus has adjusted now. Let me zoom that out because we're now going to open the plug up and take a look around in there. That will do. So, to take this plug apart then, we've got to be a bit careful because there's four screws on the back of that. And if you take the wrong screws out, all the bits inside fall out. Okay, the two screws we want to be concentrating on are right up the top there. This one and this one, okay. The screws nearer to the pins, never take those out because when you undo the plug, all the bits drop out. Got a screwdriver, deactivated screwdriver. That hasn't got all those naughty workings inside it. But let's not go into that because we're going to be going into this plug. Get the screw in there. Now, before I take this plug apart, I don't recollect talking about the other side of that plug. So we shall do that before I take the cover off. Because that is the angle I'm going to be having it at when I remove the plug cover anyway. Let's turn it around. Right, these holes. Now I said earlier on that this is a piggyback plug. And you can get in there one of the other plugs. You can get a 5 amp in there. And if you can get hold of one, you can get a 2 amp one in there as well. Okay. I will do a little demonstration of that a little further into the video. But for now, I'm going to take the cover off, which is now loose, and we'll have a look around inside. There we are then. So that is the inside of the 15 amp Wilex piggyback plug. Down the bottom here, we've got a cord grip. Okay. The amazing thing about this is immediately after the flex comes in, there's the earth terminal right in the middle there. Okay, what I'm touching the screwdriver on. That's the earth terminal. And, uh, well, somehow you've got to get the flex in there. Get a certain amount of conductor out of the flex. Strip a certain amount back and get it into that terminal. Okay, so it's probably a bit of a wrangle to do that if you're wiring up a Class 1 appliance. And I'm just going to turn that audio down a bit because I'll keep buffering into the little red zone there. Right, okay, I've turned that audio down a bit then. Only just a little wee bit. But I'll keep buffering into that red zone, which is not good. So, cord grip at the bottom then. And the earth terminal's right there. Okay, that actually links up to this centre contact. Okay. But it does it on the outside of the plug, which is a bit of a bizarre way of doing it. Okay, there's the where the earth terminal's connected on, and it goes all the way up to the tubular pin. Okay, it's not solid when you when you view it like that, it looks like it's solid, but when you view it inwards on, you can actually see it's hollow. Thus, it is tubular. Okay, so your terminal's there, and then it goes up this strip to the plug pin. Okay. So there it is, and there's your live terminal there, which is coloured red. That's the old British colours. Okay, if you wanted a new bridge, uh, the new colour, which is the harmonised European colour, that one would be brown. Okay, and the other one over here is black. Again, old British colours. Okay, the harmonised European colour for that would be blue. You've got your little part there where the other plug connects in if you was uh, piggybacking the plug onto this and another one there okay now the plug that you connect into this would also have a tubular earth pin and it would hug over the outside of that okay so there we go that's also been sliced so that as the plug pin goes over that that will shrink and as the plug pin goes over that it will then expand and hug the inside of the tubular plug pin that goes in there okay so that is the insides of the wilex 15 amp piggyback plug unfused i will just tighten up that cord grip because it's a bit loose in there i don't want it being loose i don't intend on wiring it up 
Right, it's nice and tight in there then. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's your, where the flex goes in down the bottom there, and on the on the cover. Okay. No, nothing inside the covers. No markings in there. I don't think. No. Just down there though, there's a little. Uh, I don't know if the camera would get in there. No, this is all at the wrong angle. But just down there, just underneath where it goes in, right down the bottom, it says 191, if that means anything to anyone. So there you go. Nothing special to look at in there. I'm now going to reassemble the plug. Okay, it's just a case of put that back on there like that. Turn it around and reinstate the screws into the respective holes. Again, this is a bit tricky doing this one up because you can actually, when you put that cover on, you can turn it a certain amount. So the screws totally miss the, the screw holes. It's a bit annoying. So you've got to sort of line it up a bit. Again, Wilex didn't really think that one out that well. well I think that's it now. So really speaking, the cover needs guides in it so that when you put it on, it, there's only one totally positive way it can go. Now these plugs, they don't have a, such a plugging standard. Okay, I don't know if these have a plugging standard because, well, although they're unfused, they don't have the pin configuration that you would associate with British Standard 546. So that's not it, is it? It doesn't mention any plugging standard on it. So who knows? So there we go. 15 amp unfused piggyback plug by Wirelex. It's right there. In the next section then we shall be having a look at... The, uh, the 3 kilowatt plug or the 13 amp one so yes that will be up in the next section then back after the break and what we're going to be now looking at is the next plug in the set of three the one we, uh, which is there in front of the camera now which is uh, zoomed right in on it is the three kilowatt plug or around about 13 amps okay uh, 3000 watts at 240 volts is about two, uh, 12 and a half amps so you know this one's got a 13 amp fuse in it, okay? When we undo it, you will see in there uh, a really well known fuse, okay? Type of fuse. And we, are, we shall be going into that. Let's uh, zoom that camera out a bit. And to the left there is the plug that we looked at in the previous section. Let's move that one out of the way. We've already done that one. What we're now looking at then is the 3 kilowatt one, which is right there. Rather much like the other one, it's got the tubular earth pin, and this time around, it's got the uh, similar pins, but they're a bit smaller. There it is, then. Okay, they're not as wide. Okay, the uh, the width of that plug pin is not as wide. I'll get the 15 amp one again. You can see that the plug pins are uh, they're almost the same. Okay, they're almost the same width, but you can see that uh, the 15 amp one is uh, significantly wider. If I can get them right together, there you go. You can see 
in there then. Let's uh There you go. That's about as good as I'm going to get it. If I keep that plug there and zoom right in on the end of the pin, uh, we might be able to really get this precision in front of the camera. There you go. You can see that the 15 amp one is a bit wider, only by a little smidge, but you can see that it's wider. Okay. There it is then. So we got that right down to a little act of precision. Let's uh, zoom that out then. So there it is. Once again, these plugs are. This one is polarized. Okay. If you look at the center of the earth pin, this uh, plug pin goes right across the diameter, whereas this one is like slightly lowered down, thus offset. Okay. That polarizes the plug. Okay, if that plug pin went right through the diameter of that, you'd be able to flip this upside down and put it in the plug, uh, put it in the socket the, the the wrong way up. Okay, and because this is a fused plug, if you could put that in upside down, you would be effectively fusing the neutral. Okay, not the live. So that is why, you know, from the outset of the de of the design of these plugs, uh, Wilex polarized them. So that they cannot be inverted and put in the socket the wrong, wrong way round. There's the where the flex goes in then with your cord grip across there. Uh, once again with these, you do up the cord grip from the inside. Okay. With some plugs, you can actually do up the cord grip from the outside. Uh, some of the older MK plugs are typical of that. With this one then, to undo it, we've got a screw there and a screw up there. And we should do that now. Now with this one, because it's not a piggyback plug, it will look a little different inside to the 15 amp piggyback plug that we looked at in the previous section. Okay, the screws are out then. The little brass screws. Like so, a little brass screws right there. Okay, they're out. Let's turn it around then. And we're now going to be looking at uh, the insides of the three kilowatt fused plug. There it is then. So at the bottom of the plug, we've got our cord grip once again. Now with this one, because it's not a piggyback plug. We've got the earth terminal right in the middle of the plug, so you've got a nice little bit of negotiation room there, so that when you uh, put the flex in there and the cord grip is on the outer sheet of the flex, you've got enough space there to strip uh, back a bit of the outer sheath, have a certain amount of conductor there, strip back a certain amount more and get it in that earth terminal. Okay. This is your neutral terminal because it goes straight through to the pin. Okay, and your live or, or live active phase hot, call it what you like, is up there. And the reason why that's up there is you follow this all the way down, it goes through a fuse. Okay, now that's a very well known uh, type of fuse in there because the modern day British Standard 1363 plugs have exactly the same fuse. And that fuse in there is to British Standard 1362. Okay. So there it is. Uh, I will zoom in on the fuse so that we can see the make of the fuse. If I can get that uh, remote control. There we go. Oh, I almost had that then. Come on, zoom. Oh, it's doing it. It's trying. It's really trying. It might be because I'm wobbly. Feeling a bit wobbly today. There you go. And it's Ashley, it says on that. There you go. Nice little zoom right there. Nice little precision zoom. There's an Ashley fuse. The make of it is neither here nor there. But you can see on that then, it says British Standard 1362. And somewhere on there is the rating. Okay, we will take the fuse out of the plug actually. We might as well do that. 
so that you can see with these plugs just how fiddly it is to get a replacement fuse in there. This one doesn't have the little clip-in things like a uh, British Standard 1363 plug does. Instead, you've got these little screws. So there's a whole variety of things that could go wrong here. We could lose the screws. These little part, little brass parts which are on top of the fuse, which hold it in there. Uh, we could lose one of those. You know, all sorts could go wrong. So we undo these, undo these screws. Like so. And you can see how wobbly it's gotten now. And that's just flopped down. Like that. There you go. So you can see how wobbly that's gotten. How wobbly and rickety that is. Okay, and you do the same with the one at the top. But you don't want to loosen that one right off. Because at this point the fuse should just drop out. Well, that's the plan anyway. Whether it will or not is another thing. Right, sorry about that going out of focus. But my hand was there. So we've got uh, the plug fuse then. 13 amp then. Let's get that zoom going. 13 amp fuse then. Which is standard 1362. And I'm just trying to roll it in my fingers. Oh, for goodness sake. Right, okay, up top then it says alert. They probably made this uh, fuse for Ashley. There goes Ashley there. Ashley alerts, 13 amp, which is standard 1362, and there's a number underneath that. See if I can get right in on that number. If that's at all possible. No, that's not having that, is it? How about then if I zoom it right out and got the fuse right up to the camera? That might work, I don't know. Not having that, is it? Absolutely not having that. But there's a little number underneath there. We will try and get on it because we've got to get it in the video. There you go, that's got it then. Now, from what I can see on the little screen on the back of the camera, that says uh, if I can stop the finger hand from wobbling. Uh, that is BP. One one six seven four eight three. Let's see if I can see that with my own eyes. Somewhere around about there. Again, I can't see that on even on the little screen on the side of the camera. Definitely one one something or rather seven something or rather eight three. So I don't know what that is about. Again, it, that number doesn't really matter. The main numbers are uh, British Standard one three six two and thirteen. Thirteen's a rating, of course. And uh, there you go, British Standard one three six two. That's the the more the most important number. And rating 13. And it's made by Ashley. So there you go. Let's get back into that Wilex plug, which is right there then. And this is going to be a bit of a challenge. Because we've now got all these old little rickety bits in here that we've got to negotiate with. Get the fuse back in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them around so they're sort of round the back like so. Like that. And I'm going to drop the fuse in. Well, this is the plan anyway. Whether it works or not is another story. Right, like that then. And now I'm going to drop the fuse in and then swing those little things around over the top of the end caps on the fuse. I'm going to reinstate the fuse as we found it in the video. So it's about there sort of thing. There we go. Okay, so I've got it in there then. Let's turn that around so that you can see it. Okay, it's in there, like so. There. And now I'm going to try and turn those little things around over the top of the fuse. There we go, that's one then. To 
try and rotate that fuse a bit so we can put it back as we found it originally like that so we can see the Ashley logo then I'm just going to put my thumbnail on one of those so it holds it there so I can then turn around the other little device and there we are but that's not done we've got to actually tighten those screws up So yes, what a lot of faffing around just to change a fuse in the plug. Okay. There we are. I think that's about as good as it gets. Yeah, there we are then. Yeah, it's about as good as it gets. I need to shove that up fuse up there up there a bit. Because it's not quite right in the middle. Again, with these little brass bits on here, they move when you tighten them. There it is then. So that fuse is more or less back in there as it was when we undone the plug. Okay, so every day, British Standard 1362 fuse in that one. Okay. We'll put it back together and then we'll do all these words on here see what it says on there again nothing inside there I don't think there is a number right in the middle uh, M1174 slash 6 okay in case you're interested in that there you go M1174 slash 6 nothing particularly uh, interesting in there Another thing to note about these as well, there's no brass inserts inside the thing to, you know, to do that up. So I seem to think after a certain amount of times of undoing that and screwing it back up, uh, these uh, outer covers would be eventually become defective and render the plug unsafe to use, which is a little naughty on Wirelex's behalf, really. Okay, because... MK could make the plugs with brass inserts, so why could Wilex not have done the same thing? Again, getting these screws in is going to be a bit of an issue because they, the holes are just not lining up. So this more or less has the same problem as what the 15 amp one done. So let's get the uh, that in there then. There it goes. Right, so we got the screws back in there then. Let's zoom in on that then and do all the wording that's on there. There it is then. Right up the top, we got Made in England. Okay. And underneath that, underneath the plugs, it does actually say on it, Wilex Ring Main Fused Plug. Okay, just underneath there it says Wilex Ring Main Fused Plug. Now in the UK, a ring main is basically it's a cable that comes out of the consumer unit on one set of terminals. It goes right the way around the house in a loop. And then uh, the other end of that cable then goes back to the consumer unit into the same terminals. Okay, uh, yeah, I personally hate ring circuits that's the proper name for them ring circuits not ring mains but uh yes now underneath there right at the bottom you can probably see that it says non-track okay now what that basically means if that zoom uh, focus would behave uh it basically means that uh, the plastic this plug is made out of uh when it gets dirty if it gets dirty uh, it won't form conductive tracks on on the plastic itself, okay? Because some uh, materials that electrical accessories are like made out of years ago, if they become dirty, the dirt would become conductive, and you could actually get like a, a track 
a conductive track form between the potential and then it would start burning and then once it burnt uh, it would leave like a trace of carbon behind or sort of whatever and then that would form a conductive path it would start arcing sparking and start a fire or whatever okay this uh this type of plastic does not allow that to happen so they've put on the bottom down there non-track okay so it doesn't form conductive tracks if it gets a bit dirty okay so that was a bit of an advance in uh plastics technology way back when these plugs were made i'm not saying that uh wilex invented non-track plugs okay i don't know who claimed that one but uh yes i have heard that uh, certain other plastics like bakelite and there were others that could form conductive tracks and that's what basically non-track means it means that this plug is immune to that okay so once again three kilowatts okay so yeah three kilowatts 240 volts that's about 12 and a half amps okay your full on 13 amps at 240 volts is 3120 watts okay so there it is I'll leave that there in the next section then when we come back we're going to be doing the small 5 amp one and uh, yeah just hold on there for that Here we are then, back after the last section, and what we're going to be now looking at is the last in the three of those Wilex plugs, and the one there is the 5 amp one, fuse to 5 amp. Now, with the other plug, which we looked at previously, I said the, the plug bins are smaller than the 15 amp one, but with the 5 amp ones, they're smaller even still. Okay. This one is the one that we looked at in the previous section, but we're going to be concentrating on this one now. But before we do, we will have a look at the size of the plug pins once again. Fused 5 amp then. 5 amp at 240 volts is 1200 watts. Just turn it around. There's the plug pins once again. Now, uh, as always, we've got the tubular earth pin. Okay. I might like to point out that the tubular earth pin remains the same size on the 5, the 3 kilowatt one and the 15 amp one. Possibly on the 2 amp one as well. Okay, I don't have a 2 amp one. I've never seen one. There it is. Okay, but look at these plug pins though. They're really narrow now. Okay, I will zoom in on it once again, and we should do the comparison. Look what I've done with the three kilowatts one and the fifteen amp one. Right there it is, then. And if I bring in the three kilowatt one and offer that up, you will notice that the plug pin on the five amp one is uh, much smaller once again. Okay, there it is. We'll just try and get it in the centre of the screen. There we go. You can see then that uh, there we are. Bit of a measurement difference there. And if I bring in the 15 amp one, that is when you really notice how narrow that the 5 amp plug pins are. There we are. You see? There. there it is then so they're really narrow on the 5 amp one and I seem to think the 2 amp ones are even smaller than that so 5 amp then 5 amp 240 volts 1200 watts maximum you could uh, tug out of that well that's the theory anyway you can probably get a bit more than that but we shall we won't not go into that because that's naughty on this one then like I've already said, we've got the 
two pins which are now narrower the same size tubular earth pin okay and uh, yeah we'll be opening that up now i've decided on this one we will be looking at the wording before going into the plug because although this is fused this is something a little different about this one right once again then up top made in england okay is that focus locked on i hope it has right made in england right up the top then and I think that says Wilex 5 amp fused plug. Again, the plug pins are casting a shadow on that. Yes. Wilex 5 amp fused plug, then, it says on there. Okay. Just down the bottom there. Wilex 5 amp fused plug. And once again, down the bottom there, it says non track. Okay. As, like I said, in. The previous section we have the other plug uh if this plug was to get dirt on it or whatnot uh if it ended formed a conductive track basically what it means it won't burn into the plug and form a conductive track in the plastic okay uh, with older plastics and certain other plastics technologies that used to happen and eventually what would happen is you'd get a conductive path form between the live and the neutral pins or the live and the earth and it would start sparking and popping it get worse and worse and then just go up in flames okay or it would just blow the fuse at the consumer units but with this plastic it uh, doesn't allow that to happen so therefore it's called non-track on there okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open that up we'll have a look around inside and uh, we shall be taking a look at the fuse that's in there because it's a little different from what you're probably used to let's get a screwdriver in there then one screw and another one up the top there and the cover comes open well that's the plan anyway whether it will or not it's another story i'm pretty sure before now someone's lost a screw to the plug and they've decided to super glue the back and back of the front part together and then the fuse goes and they think oh we can't change the fuse in it anymore because I've uh, super glued the plug together so they chop it off and throw it in the bin so here we go then so take the cover off and straight inside there then at the bottom once again we've got the cord grip comes in okay comes in there then Straight in the middle of the plug, because this isn't a piggyback plug, we got the earth terminal once again. This one over here is a neutral. Okay. Yes, there it is. It says neutral. And there's a, another number, little, little number there. Totally ir irrelevant. It's probably just a part number or something. And that says M174-2. There it is. M M174 slash 2 okay so we've got the neutral terminal here then and right up the top here we've got the uh, the live terminal live active face hot call it what you like now we're going to come on to this fuse then because I said this was a bit different that in there if I just whip that out again it just pops out like a, a, uh, a modern day plug it just pops out okay there's a little fuse holder then very similar to what you get in the modern day plug that center screw that goes through to the pin there okay so you never want to loosen that off okay but this fuse though there it is so it says wilex on it Again, it's going to be really difficult getting on that. I don't know if it will, but it says Wilex on it then. And I will try and roll that around. Yeah, Wilex 5 amp. So many other words on it. Alert. And now then, there's the words right there you might be interested to know. What we're looking at then is a British Standard 646 fuse. Okay. Now the 5 amp 
in British Standard 6 or 6. That was the largest capacity that you could get in British Standard 6 or 6. Okay. Now the fuse ratings for that standard are 1, 2, 3 and 5. Okay. So yes, that little plug, you can rate that down to as little as 1 amp. Okay, 1, 2, 3 or 5 would be would have been your choice for that. And if I bring in front of the camera now a British Standard 1362, which we're all used to, uh, you can see the size difference there straight away. Okay. If I can uh, hold that properly in front of the camera. A little difficult. You're going to have to bear with me on that. Right, that's about as good as I'm going to get it then. Okay, so you can see the size difference there straight off. Okay. One to the left is your standard everyday, well-known British Standard 1362. But the smaller one is your British Standard 646. And of course, even though they're both coloured red, this uh, larger one is actually 3 amp. Okay. Oh, that was a well-known manufacturer logo on that. Uh, does it say 3 amp on it? I'm pretty sure it does. There you go, 3 amp. For the big one but the smaller one is actually 5 amp and you can tell how old that is because it's red okay if you try and get a modern day 5 amp british standard six or six fuses that's actually black in there black or gray okay because they did actually end up in the end following suit with the color codes for uh, the british standard 1362 fuses that being, I think, uh, 1, 2, and 5 are black, but the 3 amp ones are red. Okay, but this is a 5 amp one though in red, so you can tell how old that is. 5 amp then, British Standard 6 or 6. Okay, and that's what makes that fuse a little different and a little unique, because it's only a little wee thing. Okay, so we're going to put that back in the plug then. It just clips in like a modern day plug would. You can see the little uh, clips just there. We'll put that in. I am going to put it in that way up like that. So you can see Wilex and 5 amp on it. There you go. Get zoom going on that for you. There you go. So you, see, you can see it says Wilex on there and 5 amp. Okay. But yes, anyone undoing that and thinking about putting a replacement plug fuse in uh, you would actually find that uh, oh dear it's not going to go in there oh what kind of a standard is that then it's a little bit of a non-standard one but uh no that's actually you know at one point in time British standard 6 or 6 was quite commonplace but uh, you can see there that uh, that's a bit different and of course the reason why in these plugs they opted for which is standard 646 is because that's the maximum size that you can get in that fuse okay look like I said one two three and five it don't go any more than that but with these you can go up to 13 amp so you won't want one of those in a 5 amp plug there's some numbers in the back of the plug there and these probably be part numbers. Okay. If I can get the zoom in there. Is that it? Right, there you go. That's got on that superbly then. So, I think I seem to think they're actually uh, part numbers for the 2 amp and a 5 amp one. One up the top says 2. Uh, 2 amp and it would be AM18 forward slash 3 and 5 amp one would be 55A M19 forward slash 3 so there you go, there's two different part numbers in there then I don't know if the 2 amp plug is the same diameter okay, if it is then that probably explains why this one's got two different part numbers in it because uh, this cap could probably go on a 2 amp, uh, two amp plug Okay, so there you go. Again, I've never seen the 2 amp one, so I don't know if the 2 amp one is the same width. 
I'm going to put the plug back together now then. So there you go. Now with this one it does uh it clips on there quite well. Okay, you've got a little guide in there and down there, so it doesn't have too much wiggle room. And I'm hoping that when we do that one back up, uh the screws will just go straight in. Uh, once again, no brass inserts in there. Oh dear. The little pl uh, little screws are brass though. So there we are. Get those screws in there then. Yes, those screws are going straight in there. No worries at all. So that one's a bit better on uh, the guidance when it goes in there. Now, just to end this one then, I said if we go back right back to where we started with this one, I said that this one was a piggyback plug. Okay, and it's got that on it. Like so. With this then you can get a 2 amp or 5 amp plug in there. Okay, and it just so happens I've got a 5 amp plug. Okay, there it is. And you can see them, they just go in there like that. Polarised, so they only go in one way round. And there you go. Okay, so you'd have your flex coming out there for, say, an electric fire or something. Uh, flex coming out of there for something, I don't know, maybe an electric iron or something like that. Okay, and then the whole lot would just plug it straight in the wall socket. Okay. So there it is, that's the idea of a piggyback plug, you can just put another one on top of it. But, like I say, Wilex were good enough so that uh, you couldn't get anything bigger in there, like this 3kW uh, one. Okay, you can't get the 3kW one in there, just won't go. Okay, because the plug pins are too wide. Okay, let's see if I can zoom in on the holes, and uh, you'll see that the... Plug pins just won't go in there because the uh, the pins are too wide. Okay, you can see that. Okay, those plug pins are not going to go in those little narrow holes. Okay, so there it is. And that is why you can't get a three kilowatt one in there because it just won't go. Okay, you can only get a two amp or a five amp in there. Okay, so there it is then. Let me just zoom out for a closing shot. Right then, what we've been looking at then in this video is the Wilex plugs. 15 amp unfused, 3 kilowatt, fused to 13 amp, which is standard 1362, and the 5 amp one, fused to which is standard 646. Hope you enjoyed watching that one. Get on the comments box. Let me know what you think about these little oddities, which uh, didn't really catch on. And uh, we'll go from there. Now, like I say, more plugs coming up later on. And there's going to be a few exclusives on this channel, which uh, didn't go on my previous channel. So you're going to have to stay tuned for those and wait until they pop up. Okay. I don't know how long this has rumbled on for. But we did cover three plugs in it, so you've got to take that into account. Okay, oh, I'm off now. Uh, thanks for watching this one. Like I say, more plugs coming up as and when. Cheers for watching this one, then.